up in a really small town on Maryland's eastern shore. The closest mall was an hour's drive away. The closest museums and ethnic restaurants took two hours, so unless you were the kind of person who enjoyed daily trips to Walmart or putting on camouflage and shooting animals in the head, then <laughs> there really wasn't anything to do there. Uh, and when you grow up in a place like that, there's a lot of first times that come way too early, like your first time having sex, and your first time drinking and driving a car, and <laughs> your first time meeting someone whose parents are actually related by blood. <laughs> and then there's a whole bunch of other first times, like your first time meeting a Jewish person, uh, your first time eating at a chain restaurant, your first time realizing that everyone doesn't swim in a racially segregated pool. <laughs> and those are the first times that come way too late in life. So I'm kind of in between these. And I'm dating this guy who I worked at a used car dealership with. And uh, he was less than attractive and <laughs> He was sort of obnoxious in the way that he always bragged about how rich he was. His parents had a lot of money. And uh, he had two things going for him, though. The first one was that no one else was really interested in being my boyfriend. <laughs> and the second thing was that his mother lived, his parents were divorced, so his mother lived like an hour away, which made the sum of his life experiences exponentially greater than mine. And so one day we got off work and he had planned this dinner for us and we got into his car and we drove an hour and we pulled up to the Olive Garden. <laughs> I had never seen the Olive Garden before or been there, but I had seen its commercials and if his intention was to impress me by bringing me to a classy place, then as far as I was concerned, he had succeeded. <laughs> The mind-blowing, I would say, pretty much began the second we walked through the rustic front door. <laughs> we passed a hostess in a shirt and tie who was standing at a cobblestone counter. The rest of it was a whirlwind. It was like cloth napkins, cursive writing on the menu, free bread, salad that you didn't have to pay extra for. It just came with your meal. I remember telling our waitress that that was the first time I had ever eaten at a fine dining restaurant. <laughs> she was six months pregnant and she had a Donald Duck tattoo like behind her ear. I ordered a dish called the Tour of Italy and I think the way it works is that like you stop in Florence for some fettuccine Alfredo and then you go to Rome for some lasagna, and then you wrap it all up in Milan with the chicken parmesan. <laughs> it was the second most expensive thing on the menu, which made total sense, because it was exactly like going on a tour of Italy, minus the passport applications and the language barriers. <laughs> and the whole time we're eating dinner, this guy is like, he's like bragging about some new expensive uh, radar detector he got, or telling me about the hot model that he dated before me. <laughs> and normally I would have been annoyed by that, but that was before I was a fine diner. <laughs> I suddenly felt like the kind of person who knew you couldn't get a radar detector for anything less than $300. And I felt classy enough to know, you know, not be insecure about my looks. And so towards the end of the restaurant, or the end of the dinner, he pulls out a motel, a motel key to the Econo Lodge. <laughs> and it was like, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen The Bachelor, but it's my guilty pleasure. And it's like this moment where they pull out this key and they're like, use this room to forgo, or this key to forgo your individual rooms and stay together in the fantasy suite. And that's what it felt like. And 
there was this voice in my head saying, don't do it. But there was a louder voice saying, you should do it. He took you to the Olive Garden. <laughs> and I'll spare you all the magical details. Uh, but I will say there was a teddy bear and there was a rose and there were some police knocking on a motel room door a, a few rooms away from us. And uh, he also had boys to men playing on repeat on a CD player. But uh, the next day I went home and I told all my friends that I finally went to the Olive Garden and he told all his friends that he finally had sex and that Monday I was asked out to places like Red Lobster and <laughs> Ruby Tuesdays in the Macaroni Grill. Thanks. <laughs>